You're listening to Fuel Radio, inspiration and training to fuel your day. Now here's your host, Rod Jans. Hi, everybody. It's uh, Rod Jans with Fuel Radio, and we're doing another business profile with my friend, Dr. Mark Pahar. Mark, why don't you just remind us what you do for work? I'm an endodontist. Uh, which is a dentist who specialized in doing uh, root canal treatment and root surgery. As we talked about last time, pain management is a, is a big deal, isn't it? And it's something that you, you really try, try to focus on. It is. You know, when someone has a bad toothache, you know, it's pretty unbearable at times. You know, I've seen people come in crying and they haven't slept for a day or two due to tooth pain. So it's pretty severe. So, you know, getting someone out of pain is really important and key to help them function. And it's always interesting when you get someone out of a pain and you see them afterwards, just the relief, you know, their faces are a little more relaxed, their demeanors change. I think it really affects a lot of your life when you're, you're having that much pain and, and it's within a tooth. Yeah. It's kind of like, it's almost like when people experience chronic pain, like they might have back pain or whatever. It's, it's always kind of on your mind and, and kind of, yeah. It, it, it does tend to interrupt your life in a way, doesn't it? It does. I mean, yeah. tooth pain is, is really acute, so it can be fixed quickly, but the acuteness can be very severe and, you know, really affect you in, in a lot of different ways. So I have a leftover question from last time, and that is, why have a root canal? Why, why not just have the, the tooth pulled? And I think sometimes people ask you that, don't they? That's a very good question. And taking out a tooth is always an option. I always present that to a patient when you have a tooth pain or tooth infection. One option is always to take it out. And that's uh, their choice. I give them the choices of the pros and cons of doing that. I, uh, If the tooth is feasible, it's a strong tooth, I always recommend to keep it if they can. And most patients want to keep their teeth, especially if it's in the front of their mouth, because replacing it can be more complicated. So yeah, uh, taking it out uh, is an option, but sometimes it's not always the best option. And I know people can't see this, but you're wearing a really nice Vancouver Canucks uh, shirt today. And uh, that, that's something I wanted to talk to you about is just your involvement in sports, which I think is really cool. Um, I know that you helped out with the Olympics. Uh, you help out with the Vancouver Giants at times. And I know that you've been at, you, you go to Canucks games once in a while as well and that you're, that you're helping out there. So what kind of things do you do and what's, what's been your involvement in sports? I guess to give a little bit of history, I've always been an avid sports fan. I played sports growing up, so it's been a big part of my life. So I was, when I was a dentist, I got involved with helping uh, young young athletes making a mouth guards to wear to protect their teeth. I'm a firm believer in that. So I focused on that, and then uh, I had a chance to become involved with the Vancouver Giants when they opened in town in 2001. So I was a team dentist for them with them for about 10 years. And I still, I was helping out until last year. And what that entails is making the mouth guards, you know, fixing any, uh, you know, dental issues and managing dental trauma. Um, I've done the same thing with the Vancouver Canucks. I'm on the medical staff. So basically I'm at the games to manage any trauma that occurs in the game. And it does happen, unfortunately. I've seen a lot of trauma over the years. Probably done more trauma management than most people have in, in the area. So I'm pretty well versed in it. I lecture lots in dental trauma, so I have a lot of experience. So that's been kind of my main uh, background, my main side thing with my job is, is dental trauma management. So what do you do? Like, for, for example, when a hockey player gets their teeth knocked out, we see it regularly. <laughs> Sometimes they'll show the teeth on the ice and there's blood. And what what do you do in that instance? Um, some It's variable. Sometimes uh, if the tooth is intact, we can put it back in. Oh, yeah. If it's been reinserted back in within 50 minutes, it has a high chance of succeeding. I've done that before in the past. Oh, you do? So you do it right there? Yeah, right there. I've done yeah. it in the locker room with a couple players in the past, yeah, yeah. over the years. So, so that must mean if they have to lose the whole tooth in that case, right? It hasn't broken. Not exactly. chipped or broken. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If it's chipped, you can often um, you know, repair it quickly and the next day. If it's into the nerve, then it needs a root canal, and then that can be done usually the, that night or the next day. Mm. Sometimes the, the the trauma is so severe that the teeth are shattered, and you just they have to be taken out, and you're just kind of managing what's there and saving the gums and bone that you can. Um, so it really it's really variable, and often I get I see play, uh, not just athletes, but you know kids from a playground, sure. adults adults falling from you know, off their bike. Yeah. It, trauma happens in all different ways, shapes, and forms. Uh, my niche has been sports, but I see a lot of it in different varieties. Right, so that brings it back home. It happens. It doesn't just happen on the ice or mm-hmm. in, in sports. Yeah. Well, just one more question about that. Then are the teams? I would imagine the Canucks have a pretty good setup. Then are they? Do they have like an operating room or what? Do they that 
or just a medical room or do you have to bring some equipment with you? <laughs> How does that work? I'm yeah, just the, curious. The Cucks have a, have a medical, a pretty good, nice medical room as most pro teams do. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there's a dental chair there. And then the, my colleague who I work with covering the team, uh, he handles most of the, the daily, the regular dental care. We have a little setup there for emergency treatment. Yeah. And it was the same thing when I was in charge of the Olympics. Yeah, I was going to say there, there was somebody that you helped out at the Olympics, right? That was kind of a... There was a few of them. There was no, one of, notable. There was a few. <laughs> yeah, a few, uh, yeah. There was a the hockey player <laughs> from the Detroit Red Wings. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, they helped out. He broke a front tooth. So we had an emergency set up there and a kit in place to, to treat the trauma that happened there. Right. His, was, his happened during a practice. It wasn't that big, big of a thing. Oh, okay. Yeah, I remember so. seeing it on an Instagram fo- post or something like that. Yeah, a picture of you with him. Yeah, I don't recall his name. Yeah, it yeah. was uh, Henrik... Uh, S- uh, S- Z- Henrik Zetterberg, yeah. Zetterberg. Henrik Zetterberg, yeah. Henrik Zetterberg. I've treated lots of players over the years. Yeah. So, yeah, there's... Lots of I've seen over the years, and I saw a snowboard. I saw, yeah, you know, world famous snowboarders and skiers, and you know. Oh yeah. And the the worst case you see is someone comes in and they break their jaw. And I've seen that several times. Oh yeah. Uh, injury so bad, it's, the teeth are down, but they've broken their jaw. So jaw and teeth. Yeah, and then usually we send them to an oral surgeon, and they have to have their jaw splinted or fixed in place. So that's usually the most severe thing. Wow. Uh, another thing I noticed on uh, on a story that was done on you a while back is that. Especially during your university years, you did some outreach kind of things. And I think you know this of particular interest to me as I worked on the downtown east side for, for five years. And, and you can't help but work down there and see that people have dental issues. <laughs> Tell us about some of those things. Let, let's start with actually where, with something else. Let, not, we'll, we'll get to the downtown east side, but. Um, you also traveled to Asia. What was what was that like, and what were you doing over there? Uh, that's uh, that was a good uh, trip. So I had a colleague who was in charge of the hospital program at UBC, and they have a trip where they send dental students and residents uh, to Asia. They had some affiliation in the hospitals, uh, one in Cambodia, one in Vietnam. So I was interested, so I asked if I can go on a trip. So we went along with those uh, three or four, three students and two dentists. And we worked in a couple of different clinics there. It was very interesting. Vietnam was interesting. Uh, it was very humbling. In Cambodia, we worked in a small little pediatric clinic. I saw a lot of kids that had rampant decay. And you're there just trying to fix the decay and get them out of pain. Mm-hmm. So it was a very humbling experience, a great experience. It made you realize you know, how dental care is very different uh, globally. And you try to help the, what you can. But it was, uh, it was, it was hard, but it was, it was good too, though. And then what about your experience on the downtown east side? What was that like? Yeah, there's a clinic on the downtown east side that was started by a couple of colleagues many years ago, and they it runs on volunteers, and it's to service patients uh, that live in that area, the, down, the, the downtown east side, that have don't have access or funds to see regular dentistry. So it's funded by the government partially and by donations. The dentists that work there are all volunteers. So I'd go work a shift uh, kind of Friday or Monday every so often, uh, and basically you're just you know, taking people out of pain. Most of them are homeless or live in the area. And they have a toothache. And a lot of it was extractions, taking out teeth mm. uh, and fixing the pain that way. So it was an interesting place to work. It was very busy some days. There was lineups at the door because it was a free dental work. But it was a good service for the patients down there. People that were very grateful. And, and it was also very humbling as well that you're able to help out there. So I did that on and off for many years. I haven't, this clinic is slowed down. It might be closing down, I think. But but it's, it's the service is still there. And that was some of your early dentistry experience too right like you were were you still learning at the time or uh, were we initially no i was already a dentist okay for a number of years. so it was when you went to asia that you were just you were still a student or no i was i was a dentist i practiced for about five years six <laughs> okay. years yeah i'm getting the story all wrong but thank you for clearing it yeah. up yeah I, another thing i noticed was in one of the articles that was done on you uh, had to do with technology and i guess that's part of coming to you as a specialist like what is there some technology that you would have that a, a, a regular dentist might not have? Or just talk a little bit about this. We're sitting, for people who don't know, we haven't mentioned it yet, we're sitting here in your office and uh, in one of your in one of your rooms. And um, yeah, so just tell us about some of the technology that you have here. When you become, when I became a specialist and an endodontist, it's a, it's a field that's evolved really fast. And there's some, in the last 20 years, there's some really um, great technology. The first being the dental microscope. 
So where I'm working with a microscope to treat cases so I can see a lot better, see more efficiently, and better lighting. So that that's some, uh, one thing that most dentists wouldn't have. So it allows you to work more precisely, see things you can't see with, say, um, glasses or, or, or loops, as they're called. So that helps the great. That's the biggest thing probably that we do. And learning to work with that, you can treat things really efficiently and effectively. I have more instrumentation that are specialized for my field that I have because that's what I do, that maybe dentists will have those things. Uh, Can you give an example of that? What's an uh, instrument that you... There's like special files maybe a dentist wouldn't use, special little tools okay. for, for you know, uh, cleaning out teeth, for you know, removing things that maybe they wouldn't have. So a little, lots of little gadgets. It's a very good field. Lots of gadgets, lots of toys. <laughs> if, you, if you like gadgets, it's yeah, a good field. Yeah. And I do, I do. So it's lots of gadgets that way. Yeah. And the third thing is we have, it's behind us in the room, is like, like a 3D X-ray machine. And a lot of dentists have them now, but for us, it helps a lot in diagnosing and, and seeing what's happening in, in, a, in a tooth or the jaw and how we can treat it more effectively. So it adds to our diagnosis. Gives you all kinds of different views. Uh, yeah. Exactly. So those yeah. three things are the big things. But, you know, I also, I also say it's not the, it's the archer, not the arrow. It's a saying I use because <laughs> people think you have these tools, it makes you better. It's not uh, also just the tools. I've done lots of training and I have lots of clinical experience. So, I, you know, that's, that adds to my proficiency as well. So I also want to add that in because <laughs> people say, oh, yeah, he has better tools. It's not just the tools. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good point. Yeah. It's, it's the person shooting the arrow. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Excellent. Good. Well, I think we'll wrap things up there and some great information. And it's great to hear more about your journey and, and some of the things that you've done and what you have here in the office. And what, what's the best way to get in touch with you? Uh, the best way, uh, if you want, you can call the office. Uh, our phone number is 604-492-3034. And our email always works as well. Info at tricityendodontics.ca. Those are the two best ways to get a hold of us. And, Great. And uh, I also have an Instagram page, and uh, which is Tri City Endo, and that has lots of information there as well. Yeah, Mark's Mark's doing really well on the on his Instagram page. It's it's it, it, interesting and worth checking out. And so, yeah, you mentioned the email. So, of course, your uh, website URL is Tri City endodontics.ca and there's lots of information there too I, I checked it out in preparation for our interview so yeah people can find out more about you there and how to get in touch with you and where you're located and all the rest of it so thanks for this thank you Rod you've been listening to Fuel Radio